Thanks for tuning in to The Island Viper. We're going to open one of the Super 7 O-Ring Reaction Plus figures today. This is the Battle Android Trooper, the comic version. Um, it's the first one that I'm going to open because it's a bat and they look awesome. So let's get to it. And uh, I have a, a new product that I, I want to show you guys. It's not mine, but I'll gladly plug it for the person who made it. I don't want to destroy the card, so I'm going to razor the bubble off with an X-Acto knife. The card is really, really nice, uh, especially these, these un I like the unpunched cards, but they're thick cardboard. You have the file card on the back. Let's take a look at that first. Of course, you have all of this classified information here, the Battle Android Trooper. Bats are the perfect Cobra Troopers. They never question orders, complain about chow, <laughs> shirk duty, or surrender. They require no leave time, sick pay, or benefits of any kind, and they are cheap and easy to replace. On the other hand, bats do not react very well to changes in field conditions, nor do they discriminate between targets. They will shoot at anything that moves, be it friend or foe. They also have an unfortunate tendency to burst into flames when hit from behind. So we have the typical Battle Android Trooper file card. Bats are dangerous to everybody. They'll shoot, bayonet, or kick anything in sight. Cobra infantrymen don't like to be on the same battlefield with bats. When a Cobra unit is losing a battle, they will dispense bats into the midst of the firefight in order to evacuate the area easily. And, of course, you have the Cobra insignia. One of the, one of the things about these cards that... Um, pretty much the entire collector community wanted with carded uh, retro style figures was a real American hero. And Super 7 has put this back on the card, whereas Hasbro was unable to do so. Cut right along this seam here. Like I said, I am going to preserve the card. I don't want to tear it up. I'll end up having to trim this because of what I'm going to do with it after. But just for the sake of getting the figure out, man, this, they're packaged very well. If you're going to do the same thing, watch your fingers. Unless you want to have band-aids on your hands or super glue a cut closed. Okay, we have a tray of accessories here. We have this submachine gun style weapon and the hand attachments and then you have this extra bubble tray here with the figure inside now that i have everything out of the package he comes with an original style backpack which will hold three hand attachments he comes with a rifle which the original battle android trooper did not include but the comic version super 7 ultimate figure which i uh, have already done a video on did include a rifle like this and he includes three hand attachments and one difference between this figure and the original Battle Android Trooper from 1986 is that both of his hands are removable. So you can attach the claw to one side. These do fit really nice. They, uh, they, they lock up pretty tight. And let's do the flamethrower to the other. And there you have your hand attachments. Those go on really well. Um, this figure feels very high quality. The paint apps are spot on. You don't have a whole lot of overspray. There's a little bit of a blemish right here on the lower leg. Uh, the lower legs are actually very similar to the original 86 bat lower legs. So are the uh, rest of the features that you see. But vintage figures, I've seen overspray much, much worse than on this figure. The paint apps on this figure look really, really good. Uh, I, I would say that they are on par or above... Um, the quality of the original 80s and 90s figures. 
that three-dimensional chest plate. I don't think that's a separate piece. It appears to be molded all as one piece. We didn't have that, but we did have the really cool lenticular sticker that always uh, fell off after a little while on the original figure. So the body is is very similar in uh, in sculpt to the original. One thing I've seen pointed out uh, several times on social media, and I, admittedly, it's a it's a thing that I saw first off when the uh, um, test shots were revealed. The legs look a little thin. It looks like all of these figures have skipped leg day. Their legs are kind of straight. But um, otherwise, like sculpt and detail, like the knees feel great. Um, I mean, this is, for all intents and purposes, the construction that, that every O-ring collector uh, loves. It's a really good looking figure. Um, 20 bucks far surpasses anything that you would buy from a, uh, a third party manufacturer cranking out uh, bats, especially right now, even though they have uh, a different a different color for every week, it seems. Focus on the backpack for just a second here. We can test fit these hand accessories into the backpack. They fit well, they are secure, they're not super loose, but it doesn't feel like they're gonna break a peg trying to get them out of there. The backpack peg itself, let's see how this fits into the back of the figure. Sometimes um, they're loose and sometimes they're not, and oh, wow, okay. So that, that slides right into place and is secure. Not gonna fall off the figure. It's actually really nice. All right, let's tear them apart. Same construction as any other G.I. Joe O-ring figure. You have the screw here in the back that we're gonna go ahead and loosen and let fall out. Then to explode the upper torso, we're just gonna turn the head and let it all come apart. Now, this is a this is not a ball joint head. This is just a swivel neck head, which differs from the original Battle Android Trooper. So this torso might be able to be modified for it, but uh, in its current state will not accommodate an original neck ball or ball jointed neck head from an 86 bat. Uh, we'll see about some of the other parts because I do have a vintage bat that I have not restored right here next to me. Uh, your O-ring is considerably smaller than the typical O-ring that you would find in this style of figure. And just for the sake of science, we're going to go ahead and disassemble a leg as well. Those are in there pretty tight. Same type of construction as is typical. So these legs should fit the, should be interchangeable with, uh, with the vintage figure. And we'll, we'll test out that theory. So we're gonna keep this uh, separated back here and try and put the screws back in where they came from. So you have this, uh, this lower leg that would probably be compatible with a vintage as well. And again, the same type of construction. The only major difference is the type of neck joint for the head. So this head is pretty much stuck with um, the torsos that accept that swivel head. Let's take a look at accessory compatibility between a vintage bat and the new one. So I have one of the hands here and that it's tight but it goes right on there we go so at least that is compatible and this is a a damn near 40 year old figure so you know do the do these things at your own risk the claw attachment 
same thing uh, should go right on not nearly as easy now I will say that these uh, these hand attachments are made of a somewhat soft material it's not super soft but it's uh, not like some of the stuff that we've been getting with the classified line but it's pliable enough that it's gonna give a good grip to uh, to these posts I don't have a set of micrometers on me or a set of calipers or I would mic out the uh, the diameter of that post the backpack here's the difference between the two backpacks they're very similar the post looks to be similar as well now this accessory pack is a factory uh, factory reproduction accessory pack so but the backpack does fit the vintage figure very well we'll see how the reproduction backpack fits this one it actually fits a little bit loose which tells me that the peg on the actually you know what this might be yeah that's a repro backpack i'll have to find a vintage one but the uh, as you can see that that fits flush and is in there nice and snug Let's see how it fits on the vintage it's a very tight tight fit will not go in and it actually popped back out so we're not going to force that so the backpack is not compatible you could potentially like if you wanted to modify this you could shave that down a little bit in diameter and make it work i would not suggest doing that let's try these accessories on the a hey, there we go so the hands they're a little bit loose but the hands and i'll show you how they fit the vintage bat they go on pretty tight so you've got some a little bit of tolerance changes there uh, they're kind of loose on the new battle android trooper let's try the hand and the hand fits much, much better. So it appears as though the actual hand attachments, well, that one actually fits pretty well too. So um, it's, it's close to the original size, very, very close to the original size. I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this Battle Android Trooper and then we'll do some parts comparisons. I'm only disassembling the leg on the same side and we'll see what fits where. So this is a, that, that knee joint fits, it's very tight, but you can see that it does go together here. Let's see if it mates up with that side. And no, no, it does not. You can see that post is just a little bit too big for the hole there. And we can see the difference between the original having that little step down whereas this one does not have the step down so modification could be could be made uh, so that those would fit let's try the uh, upper leg on the new t-hook the t-hook does appear to be uh, about the about the same size it might be a little bit smaller it is it is just a little bit smaller but it will fit so you could put the entire leg assembly an entire vintage leg assembly onto one of the new bats and let's see if the opposite is true I'll try this that's uh that's a very tight fit but i mean t hooks vary in size so that's uh that's something that could be arranged with different parts and pieces i'm going to reassemble these legs and check out the waists and see how the waists fit the vintage waist does go on to the new leg set pretty easy it's a good fit i do like the fitment of all the parts with the new figure uh, being of tighter tolerances and the same is true for the waist it does seem to be a little bit of a tighter, tighter tolerance but it works
We'll check the arms and the torso and then get everything back together. These arms are not gonna fit that torso without modification. Let's see if these will fit over here. But the new arms do appear to fit the vintage torso. They're very loose, but they will they will fit the torso. You could again, you could make some uh, modifications to make that fit. The same with the vintage arm and the new torso. I'm not sure why you would do that, but it is a possibility. You can make parts fit. Easy to reassemble. Everything goes back together nice and tight. The figure feels great in the hands. One thing I wanted to address here was the fitment of the rifle into the hand, and I don't see a problem with that. Um, it's not super. It's not a super tight grip, but if you place it like it would typically be carried and use that stock as kind of a brace, I mean, it's not going to fall out of the hand. Well, I I said that, but I was wrong. It stays well enough that you could pose the figure. It's just not moving him around a whole lot with the rifle in hand. Try the other hand. Same thing. It's the grip. The grip on the, on the rifle is a little bit thin, but yeah, this is, this is a fantastic figure. Anybody that likes bats, jump on these when you are able. Uh, I will have stock of them. I, my purchase order is for November. Um, I just ordered an additional number of cases uh, yesterday. And like, there's no reason why this figure by itself, let alone the others, shouldn't be wildly popular amongst the three and three quarter fan base. I know I've seen some people say they don't like the appearance of them because they don't like the cartoon and whatever that's, you know, to each their own. But this really is a solid offering. This is a very, very good quality figure. Super 7, I know, has had quality issues in the past with their Ultimates line. Uh, from things I've read, not from things I've experienced, but from things I've read. And I don't see any quality issues whatsoever with this figure. I think that it's, they, they really knocked it out of the park with this O-ring line. Uh, it is a fantastic figure. And the, uh, the price point after disassembling it and playing with it a little bit, like 20 bucks for this figure with everything that you get the quality being far beyond a lot of the stuff that we're seeing coming out right now uh the everything that that most of us wanted with a uh with packaging and a card back like they went above and beyond with these to really put out a stellar product this is specifically set up for figures that have a full-sized six by nine card back and it is thorac.com. The website is uh, embossed into the back of it, www.thorac.com. These are very different from the cases that I sell. The cases that I sell are smaller and they're not formatted for a full size six by nine card back. I do use these for all of my loose figures, as well as a wide version of the case for figures with larger accessories. But this, this is awesome for the collectors of figures with full card backs, or if you have a, uh, a figure that's like the bubble has just released and come off of a full card back. That would be a, a, this would be a good choice for that as well. Um, this, where I've cut the bubble from the card back and wanted to preserve it, but still be able to display everything and have it be able to be loose. Um, this is a, a pretty valuable setup here. So I'm gonna place the backpack in the top bubble, the rifle by itself in this large bubble over here, the figure in, okay, so, 
they could have made this this bubble here a little bit taller because the figure is going to set slanted to the side that's an issue that i see with this right off the bat um get it the bat no pun intended so i'm going to bend his legs just a little bit um makes me rethink these thorac cases and he's still too tall for uh proper fitment in the bubble but uh we'll see how it looks once we get everything closed up here take the card back and i mean my bubbles um the let i'll show you the uh, the fitment of the figure and the bubbles that i use these clam cases that i sell should be a yeah should be a pretty good fit um they're they're close they're very close but at the end of the video i'll show you exactly how i display all of my loose figures in those i know most of you that have watched my videos before have seen this you've seen what i do and a ton of uh a ton of you have purchased these from me, and there's a lot of buyers on eBay. So, and there we have a full card back displayed with the figure. I'm not too put off by the fact that the figure is at a little bit of an angle. Um, he's he doesn't have to stand straight up, but you, I do like the fact that they have accessory bubbles on the top and side, you have the backpack bubble and the accessory bubble over here. These are a nice thick case, and yes, I am still gonna give them a plug and a promotion on the back, embossed right here, thorac.com. I believe that uh, routes to their eBay store. But I got some of these, this is how I'm going to uh, display this, this first round of figures that I've gotten of the Super 7 O-Rings. Thanks a lot for joining in while I messed with and played with and experimented with this uh, this Super 7 Retro, or the Super 7 Reaction Plus O-Ring Battle Android Trooper figure. That is a mouthful. The Thorac case seems to be working out pretty well. Uh, the figure bounces around quite a bit, but I get why they made the bubble a little bit wider, and the accessory bubbles are a very nice addition as well. Uh, so those of you who collect with full card backs, uh, these might very well be a display solution for you. You still get that mint on card style display with the ability to open this up and take the figure out for photography or play or whatever you want to do. This is the clam showcase that I sell for loose figures. I have approaching a hundred different card backs available for these. These are available on my eBay store. Um, or if you contact me outside of there, we can set up a list and we can just do a deal through PayPal. I'll pan over here and show you real quick um, my loose vintage and, and third party collection. All of these are uh, from various years, from 1982 all the way up through the early 2000s. And I have both the, uh, the narrow bubble and a wide bubble case for those. I also sell cases for six inch figures. These are, these work best with uh, GI Joe classified and Marvel legends. Um, I also have cases for eight and a half inch scale figures like the super Joe unlimited. Uh, I believe Mego will fit in those as well. But anyway, again, thank you for joining in and uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons, comment, let me know your thoughts. And, um, I'll see you again soon with another opening of one of the Reaction Plus figures. Yo, Joe! Oh, no, 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 no. Cobra!